We all know that today is the world of SUVs. You get SUVs in all shapes, forms, sizes, abilities, some that can go off-road, some that can't really go off-road. But it would be no surprise that given the sales volumes that SUVs are doing worldwide, Ferrari has also brought out its, well, they don't call it an SUV, it's the Pura Sangwe and Ferrari specifically insists that you do not refer to it as an off-roader or an SUV. So what is the Pura Sangwe all about? Well, I think it looks smashing. It has a naturally aspirated V12 engine that sounds the absolute beans. And we are in Dubai today driving it both on and off the road to see what the Pura Sangwe offers. Is it a Ferrari that you should be drooling over? Well, watch the video to find out. Of course, other than the driving highlights of a Ferrari, the other highlights are how it looks. And how does the Pura Sangwe look? We'll do a deep dive into its design today. I was actually present when the Pura Sangwe was first unveiled in, I think, September 2022. I was at uh, Maranello and they showed us, and but we weren't allowed to take any pictures or use the camera. So this is actually the first time I'm getting to see a Pura Sangwe in the flesh. How does it look? Well, if you're a Ferrari purist, you're going to say it's hideous, but I would disagree. I think it looks absolutely smashing, especially in bright colors. I've seen one that was in yellow, and while I'm no fan of yellow cars, let me tell you, a Parasangwe in yellow looks absolutely fantastic. What do I think? Well, I think it's something, it's a design that Ferrari's done really well, because you see, when you look at it, standing here with its massive bonnet, which houses that V12, it looks a pretty compact car, but it's actually five meters in length. So I think they've really disguised the size of the Prasangwe very well. There are more highlights that I'll come to, two or three really uh, uh, terrific pieces. I also like the really uh, wide rear haunches and you'll see all the carbon fiber all around the wheel arches, under the doors, wheel arches, then again towards the rear spoiler. All of that is done specifically to show off all the various aerodynamic touches that have been given to the Parasangwe, which makes it, well, very, very slippery. You see, this is a duct which pulls in air from above the bonnet towards here to generate downforce. There are another couple of ducts in the front. There's another in the front bumper. Then you get one towards the rear of the wheel arch. Uh, then you get another one at the back. So Ferrari, uh, using its racing experience, has done a really good job at giving the Purasangwe, very slippery uh, uh, sort of shell. What that does, it improves the efficiency, improves how fast the car can go. So obviously, it's also all-wheel drive. And if my memory serves me correct, this is the first four-door production Ferrari. Now that brings me to another highlight. So the front doors open normally, like this. But it's the rear, that's the rear part to take. So it opens in suicide door style. What that does, well, one, it gives the car a really impressive party trick because it looks really impressive. Anytime you're gonna go with your friends or to a hotel or somewhere else where you'll open the doors like that, trust me, it's gonna get you a lot of eyeballs. Second thing, and this is one of my favorite things, I really love the detailing of the rear door here. You can actually see the rear tire poking out from under the wheel arch. And I think it's done really, really well. Third thing, to close the rear door, all you have to do is press a button and it closes itself. That's one. Now let me show you another thing that I really love. It's unusual for uh, modern cars. Uh, it's unusual uh, for the, I mean, the whole age of cars, but the bonnet is actually a clamshell bonnet. And why do I like it? Well, I've always liked clamshell bonnets. I love how they look when the bonnet is open. And the biggest party trick for me is that 6.5 liter V12 that you see right here. And it's mounted so far back in the chassis that Ferrari actually refers to the Purasangwe as a front mid engine car. And you can see because a lot of this almost what two, two and a half feet of space is left for other ancillaries. The engine's actually right under the windshield. So yeah, that's some of the highlights of the Purasangwe. More about the car when we get inside specifically how it drives. That's the big thing. I've taken it onto sand and I'm going to tell you more about it. So 
we've spoken about uh, the basic concept of the Pura Sangwe. We've spoken about how it looks, all the aerodynamic work that's been done, all the detailing in the design. How is it inside? Well, I have to say, in the past 20 odd years, the quality levels and the touch and feel of Ferraris, especially inside the car, has really shot through the roof. Current Ferraris really feel absolutely top quality. They look good. They feel good and they are built very, very well, as you would expect. Um, uh, earlier, they used to have the sort of notion, Italian cars, slightly temperamental, but they are also proving to be super reliable and at the same time, great fun to drive. Inside the Prasangwe, you get a departure from the traditional current design uh, sort of languages that you see in cars. There's no big center screen for you to touch everything. Most of the controls are through the steering. You have a few buttons here, uh, like the reverse button, a few modes, uh, the window switches and stuff like that. Otherwise, there are two screens, major screens inside the car. One's in front of the driver in the instrument console. That's a 10.2 inch, very high resolution, lovely screen that gives you the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, whatever else you have to control, you can control through here. The other is a dedicated screen that's for the passenger and the passenger can see content, they can see what the vehicle is doing and a lot of other stuff that is done. And you get a small rising touch, uh, uh, sort of physical control here to control your HVAC, your AC systems. Other than that, it's pretty much controlled through the steering wheel, which can, can be a bit fiddly at times, but it, uh, but something I'll come to later. But otherwise, the interior feels really nice. You've got the Pura Sangwe uh, written right in the dashboard, right in front of the passenger. The biggest thing is you get four seats, so you can actually seat four adults. And because you get rear doors, remember, uh, most Ferraris have been two-door till now. Because you get rear doors, getting in and out, especially with the suicide door opening, is super easy. So that's the biggest thing about the Pura Sangwe. It offers a comfortable place for four adults. You also have a reasonably large boot. So if you're gonna go with four adults for a trip, well, the Pura Sangwe can certainly fit the luggage. Although I think, you know, I'm being the middle class person that I am thinking about practicality, <laughs> because if you have a Pura Sangwe, I'm sure you have other cars that can take much more luggage. But yes, so you can take four people out in a Ferrari, which is a really good thing. Practically, you get all-wheel drive. Uh, you get 715 BHP, 716 Nm of torque, which means that the Pura Sangwe positively flies. The naturally aspirated engine loves to rev, makes a great sound, as you would expect. And the eight-speed gearbox, which has been brand new, developed for the Pura Sangwe, shifts very very efficiently you also get these large carbon fiber panels that you can use to change gears if you wish to do so otherwise left to its devices the gearbox is really really good uh the ride not the suspension also has been custom developed for pura sangwe ferrari when i was there at the uh, global reveal of the car mentioned that they thought about giving the pura sangwe air suspension but it was the air suspension systems are too slow for their liking. They, the handling or rather the reaction time of the air suspension systems to changing surfaces was something that the Ferrari engineers didn't like. They thought it was too slow. So they've developed a brand new suspension system which basically uh, applies, has a 48 volt electrical system on each corner of the car and that changes the suspension settings as quickly as possible to make sure that the, the ride is comfortable, the suspension is uh, as planted as possible, you can do high speeds all day long. But I have to say with the 22 inch wheels, tires in the front, 23s at the back, even on Dubai's really good roads, suspension still feels quite stiff. So how stiff will it be in India? Well, that's going to be one issue. The other thing that I found a little odd, the steering isn't as uh, communicative as I've seen on other Ferrari cars. It's a little bit, uh, I would say, um, the, the feedback is not enough. So that, that, that would be the only thing. It's not as quick as you would get on a 488 or a 296, but I think that's a good thing because of the size of the car. The weight, which is also quite nice actually. I was just reading my notes uh, from the global reveal. The weight loaded of this car with the fluids and fuel and everything should be in between 21 100 to 2200 kilos, which for a size of this car with its big engine, all-wheel drive hardware, 
space for four people, luggage is really impressive. Remember, it's a five meter long car. It's not a small car. So, yeah, I mean, the, that, that is something that really reflects on the dynamics on how quickly the Prasangvi changes uh, uh, sides, how alert it is, how quickly it accelerates. Uh, again, I'm going to come back. The sound it makes is absolutely fantastic. In fact, I haven't really listen to the stereo system and that's for obvious reasons. What do I think of the Prasanga? Well, I think it's a really, really good product. It's unique. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. You might disagree with on that. And it offers you a very practical way to uh, get around with four adults, get the family to experience the Ferrari with you at the same time. So I think that's, that's really unique. There's huge amount of demand. It's sold out for multiple years. And I think uh, there is a criteria. You have to have an X number of Ferraris already before you can even get in the waiting list to the Paris Hangway. It's not cheap. It will, I mean, it will be in, in the double digit crore figures. But with the demand being what it is worldwide for Ferraris, uh, for supercars, uh, I think Ferrari has launched an absolute uh, terrific car. It's not for everybody, but it's something that does really well it's not an suv that's what ferrari says look we haven't built it to go off-road we built the all-wheel drivability the 185 mm of ground clearance to make sure if you're going on a dirt road or if there is snow or ice or slightly bad road conditions you can do that easily in comfort with four people sitting and well after driving it after listening to it after looking at it i think it's a fantastic car what do you think about the prasangwe would you buy one if if you had the money and the opportunity. Tell us about it in the comments. For me, I think it's a win-win situation. I would love to own a Prasangwe. Fortunately, I don't have the money for it, but that's okay. I still get to drive it and I really enjoyed the experience with this Ferrari.